Good morning. How you doing, Turnaround Leader? This is Otis with OtisClayton.com. I am so excited to talk to you guys today about progress monitoring. And listen, the purpose of these videos is to help school leaders or teacher leaders who want to get into leadership. And once you get there, you really don't know what to do because the books won't show you or tell you in depth with the things that you need to do in order to turn around a school to increase student achievement and growth. So I want to offer you some research based strategies and also some of my expertise and experience to help you get over the hump. So let's talk about progress monitoring. The purpose of progress monitoring is to implement systems that allow you to reach your goal. Now, these are goals that you set in the summer uh, with your school improvement team where you identify programs and dollars that you've allocated. And as the school year wears on, it moves so quickly and you can lose focus. So sometimes I ask an administrator, I say, OK, well, as I'm helping you. Let me see your school improvement plan. And they say, wait a minute, let me find it. And so that lets me know right there that when you set those goals, you didn't really think about what's going to push you to that next level. So whether you did or you didn't, I want to give you five steps to progress monitoring that you can implement right now and be able to increase student achievement and growth. So number one is to set a goal. So if you don't have a goal, create a smart goal that is specific, measurable, achievable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. It should focus in on a specific subgroup as well as a program that you want to implement so that you can watch it closely and you have a laser-like focus on what you want to accomplish. So number one is set the goal. Number two is create the team. I strongly recommend that you have an administrator, um, a non-instructional person, a guidance counselor, and also the teacher who a teacher or teachers who are going to be closely doing the work. So if you're putting in an ELA initiative to help African American males, then let's get those ELA teachers in there so that we can hear their ideas about what they want to see done with the work because everyone has to have skin in the game in order to get this done. So the second step is to form your team. The third step is to prioritize activities. So let's talk about programs, initiatives, measurement tools, surveys, all of the things that need to be done in order to bring that goal to fruition. Who's going to take what? So you divvy up the work because that's one way to decrease value among a amongst the team is to not have work, meaningful work spread out amongst everybody. So as you prioritize those tasks, Talk about what's most important and then put them in order and delegate that responsibility. So that's step three. Step four is to execute the plan. Now, with executing the plan, you identify how often that you're going to meet. What are the deliverables that may be obtaining student work? It may be getting information from common formative assessments. It could be discipline data, attendance data. Who's going to be responsible for mining those uh, pieces of data and bringing them back so that you can monitor the plan, um, the action plan that you put in place. All right. The fifth step is to revisit those goals. So revisit the plan of action after you've done your execution. We need to set a time on when we're going to meet. So as the team is formed, you say, hey, we're going to meet at this time. And here's what everyone is responsible for. So when you revisit your goals to see how it's going, I recommend that you do every 10 to 20 days. 20 would be the maximum because there are nine 20 day cycles and it just gives a cleaner break on attendance when grades are due so that you can see a measurable impact um, of students. Now, sometimes you may need to meet every week. Or initially, when you're informing the entire school community of the goal, um, you may need to meet more often and send more communication to parents, community members, teachers, students, and staff members. So that's also important to uh, consider. And so a quick example that I use to increase the graduation rate by almost 25 points is to meet with my graduation team uh, every 20 days Everyone had a responsibility. Guidance counselors would call kids that were on our cohort. We would implement after school tutoring. We implemented um, 
intervention during the school day for students who are behind in credits to obtain those credits that they need to um, with the online system through our district so that we were able to help kids graduate and we also met in small groups with students who are on the fence so when you're in an urban secondary school setting a lot of things start to happen you know especially with families and we just have to go above and beyond to show our kids that we care and so I just want to tell you that as a turnaround leader you have to care about your kids and about your students and take these goals that you set and take them seriously so as a quick recap with progress monitoring the first thing you want to do is set a goal the second thing you want to do is create the team the third thing you want to do is set priorities prioritize your activities the fourth thing that you want to do is execute the action plan and the fifth thing you want to do is revisit those goals to have a system that's going to measure what you want it to measure. All right, guys, thank you so much for taking a look at this video. I am Otis with OtisClayton.com. Please like this video, share it with five educators, and also subscribe to this channel. Have a great day.